Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwarzan and today I will be talking about managing information in a shell script. In the previous session, we looked at how we can create our own shell script. We will now take the shell script a little further and look at how we can store and write data from within our script. Here is a look at what we will be covering today. First up, we will explore variables and why we need them. We will then look at creating and using variables. Once we have explored variables, we will take them further by exploring how to capture the output of a command and store it within a variable. We will then look at writing information to files. And finally, we will see how to pass information to our script. This would also be a good time to discuss about placing our scripts in the correct place within the computer. First up, we will look at variables. Variables are containers that can hold information. They allow us to use information in our tasks simply by reusing the variable it is stored in. This results in a leaner, cleaner and more compact script. The biggest advantage of variables is that if there is a need to change the data being stored in a variable at a later date, then we only have to change the value in the variable. All other statements in the script which use this variable will still simply start using the new data. So in the future, if there is a need to modify the information, we only have a single point of change to make. This greatly aids in the ease of maintenance of the script. It also makes the script more readable. Be aware that the value of a variable can be changed at a later point of time within the script if the script calls for it. Creating variables is very easy. You simply declare a name and assign it a value using the equal to sign. For example, if we are going to be using the path to the logs folder, then storing it in a variable called path underscore to underscore logs makes sense. We would then follow it up with the equal to sign and follow that up with the path in quotes. To use this variable in a command, we would simply call out the name with the dollar symbol prefixed before it. The dollar symbol is necessary to access the value being held by the variable. While declaring variables, try to use names which explain the purpose of the variable or give more information and details about the content being held by the variable. Let us modify a script we wrote earlier to use variables. When using variables within a script, it's good to identify situations where you're reusing data. For example, the word tools is being used in several places. Similarly, the word reports and help. Therefore, they make good candidates to be stored in a variable and reused elsewhere. Let us go and do just that. We will declare a variable called tools folder and store the value tools in it. At every occurrence of the word tools, we will replace it with the variable name with the dollar sign prefixed before. And we will do the same for the reports and the help. And the same for the help folder. We could also do this for the hidden file that we files that we are creating. So let us declare some variables for that. Within it, we will use our other variables and reuse our variables. in place of the hard-coded file names. Don't forget to put the dollar sign before your 
variable to use the value inside it. And there you go. That's how you could use variables. We can see that it is very easy to define our own variables. However, we are not restricted to creating our own variables. The system provides us with predefined variables. These give us access to useful information, such as path to the current user's home folder, the shell interpreter being used, the username for the currently logged in user, and more. We can get the complete list of system defined variables with the help of the print env command. How about using these variables? Well, we will use it the same way we would use our own variables. Just prefix the dollar symbol before the variable name. Let us modify our script to use a system variable. A situation where we can use a system variable right now and that is to navigate to the home folder. So let us use the home folder system variable. This way if the user's folder is located at some other location, the dollar home variable will give us the correct path. Now that we have seen how variables can be created and used, the next logical step is to use them to store the outcome of a command. Why would we want to do this? Let us suppose that a command returns the path to a folder and we would like to perform multiple tasks on this folder. We can simply save the path in a variable and then use the variable across the script. If storing the result of the command in a variable was impossible, then we would have to execute the command over and over again every time we needed the result. But before we store the outcome of the command, we first need to understand how we can capture the output of a command itself. This is done with the help of command substitution. The command to be executed is placed within the dollar symbol followed by a parenthesis expression. You may also come across an older way of doing the same thing. Instead of using the dollar parenthesis, the command would be placed within two backticks. So, to store it in a variable, we would just place the command on the right hand side of the equal to sign. For example, if we wanted to store today's date, we would use the date command placed within the dollar round brackets on the right hand side of the equal to sign. On the left hand side of the equal to sign would be the name of our variable. Let us modify our script to capture and store the data capture the data coming out from a command into a variable. It still involves the, vari the declaration of a variable followed by the equal to assignment and the command substitution operator with the command inside. And that is how you would take the result of one command and save it in a variable. While it is useful to store information within variables, there are some limitations with this. Sometimes we would like to store our data outside the script, for example, within some other file. If this were possible, it would allow us to access the information across multiple invocations of the script. The way we write to a file is by redirecting the output of the command from standard output to a file. There are two operators that help us with this. The redirect operator with a single angle bracket will write the contents to a file. This will replace the existing content of the file. The redirect operator with two angle brackets will also write contents to a file but this will append or add the existing content. Depending on what you want, you can use one of the two approaches. A good example of this is writing to a log file. Let us modify the script to log script events to a log file. 
Noting down the events taking place within our script to a log file is a very important task. Unfortunately, it's very easy to do that. All that we need to do is redirect the output coming from the echo statement to a log file. Let us save the path to the log file in a variable so that we can reuse that variable everywhere. This log file will be in our home folders library folder, logs folder, and it would be called something similar to our script name that makes it easy to identify. Ending with the extension now. And then we would simply redirect our output to this log file. This would ensure that all these items are being written to the line. The first echo statement and the last echo statement we leave as is so that the user who's running our script gets a feedback that the script started and ended. But we could have another echo statement out here just to indicate that we are starting and redirect that to the log. The other thing that we can do to make our log a little more efficient is to actually insert the date in between or rather at the start of the message so that we know the date and time at which that particular event took place. You might wonder why don't we use uh, the today variable itself but if there is a big gap in terms of time between the execution of statements Using the today variable won't reflect the accurate timestamps that we want. We wouldn't know exactly and precisely when an event took place. So instead, we will use command substitution right inside our echo statements. And this will give a more accurate piece of information in terms of the precise date and time that that particular event took place. As you can see, it's very easy to write our data to log files. Also note, I'm using the double arrow, that is the append operator. So all these statements will be added to the existing log files. While storing information and capturing information within a script is useful, it is also useful to have the ability to give information to a script at the time of running the script. This allows the user of the script to have greater control over the end result or outcome of the script. The information that is passed into the script is stored in predefined variables known as positional variables. They are typically named $0, $1, $2 and so on. Let us see how to use them. Looks pretty good. But there's one small problem. Every time a script runs, it's going to create a folder called Tools, Reports, and Help. If at a later date we decide that we wish to change the names, we have to open up the script and replace the name out here. Which is not very difficult thanks to variables, but it does mean that before running the script, we have to make changes to the script. Wouldn't it be nice if the user of the script could specify the names he or she would like to use while running the script without having to open them? And that's where passing information to the script comes in handy. We will allow the user to pass these folder names as arguments to the script and capture them using positional variables. So we can say, that the first variable represents the tools folder. The second variable represents the reports folder and the third variable represents the help folder. In fact, we can even use the zeroth variable out here uh, in order to print the name of the script. This gives a lot of flexibility to end users when they are running our script. Let us try running our script to see what happens. 
I will bring up terminal. I will just double check the permissions on our script. Make sure terminal has access. And now when I run our script, I can give different names. I could say apps instead of tools, status files instead of reports, and support instead of help. There you go, it's giving me the name of the script out here in the echo command. I can see my folders out here. And if I go to the library folder, logs folder, I should see my log out here giving me the information with the date and time stamps. So everything looks very good. That's how we can use positional variables to make our script even better. One last thing to talk about now is script locations. So far, we have been placing our scripts wherever we wish and running them from there. However, it may be a good idea to use a consistent location for the same. Using standard or consistent locations allows us to easily locate scripts and also allows other users to know and find scripts without having to ask anyone else for help. There are several candidates for such locations. One example of a standard location is the scripts folder in the library folder. These are pre-created folders. The only decision that needs to be made is whether it is the library folder in the user's home folder or the library folder located at root. Placing it in one or the other folder determines if the script is available only for a specific user or for all users on a computer. There are other locations possible too. Developers often have a folder in their home folder called developer. This needs to be manually created, but once created, the system recognizes it as the folder where files related to development are kept. You can create a scripts folder and place it in there. Another popular location is the application support folder within the library folder. You can create a folder that represents items related to your scripts and then place the script in that folder. Note that these folders will have to be created manually. Lastly, there is the option of placing your scripts in the applications folder. This makes sense if you want to expose your scripts to the end user. Maybe these are scripts that the end user runs. Like the developer folder, the applications folder in the home folder needs to be created. But once created, the system recognizes what it is intended for and gives it special privileges. The scripts folder within it will have to be created manually. To summarize, the ability to store data within a script, pass data to a script, or store data on an external file from within a script has several advantages. This makes the script more powerful and compact at the same time. It also makes the script less susceptible to errors and mistakes. Thank you.